definitely refreshing to me and kind of energized me about getting going. Um, how far into it am I? I would say probably, I don't know, 90% of the way. I mean, there's still some guys I haven't connected with. Some I've tried through texts or gotten some texts, but some of the guys are playing winter ball. Some of the guys, just I just haven't gotten to everybody yet, but a, a lot of them. I think back when, um, when you had your press conference, you mentioned Salvi and Bobby being you know, two of the first guys. I wondered um, what has been sort of your conversations with them like? What have been your, just your initial impressions of them? Just guys and also as players, as guys you've seen on the other side of the field. Yeah, I've had two brief conversations with Salvi. He's been traveling a lot. He's been around, t you know, tough to, <laughs> tough to nail down a little bit, but I've been super impressed with the, the accountability and the, and the ability to, to articulate what he, what he thinks is important. Same with Bobby. I mean, kind of mature beyond his experience level. Um, really professional really thoughtful in what he says and and uh, you can tell through the conversations with other guys that they feel the same way about him when you look up when you when you look more closely at the makeup of this roster and get to know it more intimately what where are some areas that you guys that you think you guys can take a step forward next year well I mean you always step forward by pitching you know pit, getting getting people out is what wins games and so I think that's that's where we're gonna look to make our biggest strides on the pitching side um, I think it's exciting because the guys that are going to make those strides are the guys that are already here, you know, for the most part. Um, so that's pretty cool to know that they've gotten those reps under their belt. Um, some of them have taken some lumps. Some of them are really aware of why they have um, and what they need to improve on. So I think it's pretty cool that those guys have gotten those reps at the big league level and now they can start to make those big strides. And as you've, you know, on the pitching front, as you've, as you've solidified that, that element of your coaching staff, what are the attributes you look for in, in, in Sweeney and, and, and the guys you're talking to like what what is the philosophy you, you try to be on on board with they're pretty they're pretty well-rounded in my opinion they, they're they're great people they care about the players they want to make them better they're good communicators they're good listeners you know and I think that's a big part of this is trying to get so we're helping the players get better we're not dictating what they're going to do we're partnering with them to make them as good as they can be through every avenue we can whether it's Mechanics, sports science, nutrition, all those, every department is going to have a say, but they ultimately have to lead the, lead the way. It's their career. Because you've worked for a couple organizations that are terrific at the pitching pipeline, you know, having yeah. that, that factory going, basically. I'm, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of takeaways from those experiences that you can apply here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and I, and I think, you know, not having been in the pitching department for either of those teams, it's more observing, listening. Yeah. Um, watching how they work and interact with players and, and really it's that every department has a, a voice and then they all come together for a common message to, to help the player improve. Uh, so Kluge, I wonder what was, um, what about him was you know, attractive as far as bringing him over with you to be on your staff here in Kansas City and, and what was sort of the, the, that role the Major League Field Coordinator in Tampa Bay, like what was sort of the duties in, in relation to yours as the bench coach? Um, so the first part of that question is what was attractive is he's a longtime friend of mine, a longtime uh, teammate, somebody that I've seen on both sides of the ball as a coach, as a player, and no one that I've been around um, has the dedication and the drive to make players better like he does. I've been around a ton of good coaches, and that's not to discount from anyone else but his willingness to dive into every aspect of what can help a player get better is unparalleled. Um, and then from a game management standpoint, he is super aware of situations, of rules, of people's emotions and feelings and how to, how to help connect with those players. And that's gonna be a huge attribute for me to utilize. Um, as far as what his role was in Tampa, it was pretty widespread. You know, he helped me. Uh, run spring training. Uh, he was integral in that. During the season, he was put together the daily schedule and what everybody was going to be doing time-wise. Um, as well as he controlled the running game, he was a big part of that. And he was is the catching coach, so he had a lot of responsibilities. Is he going to be the catching coach for you guys here? Yeah. yeah. Um, you were talking about the pitching. I wondered uh, at this point if you. At all reached out to Grinky. I mean, honestly, he's a free agent, but he's you know a guy that I know you guys have you know it's, it's 
express interest in having him back, obviously, if he wants to play again? I personally had one conversation with him uh, shortly after I got the job. Um, beyond that, I don't know who else has spoken with him. I can I have had one conversation with him. Did you, did you get any sort of sense of what he was feeling? It was early in the off season. I think he was still uh, he was about to go on vacation. So I think you know we just had more of a introductory conversation and just talked about some baseball stuff and his career and seeing him from the other side of the field, stuff like that, but nothing nothing in depth. As far as um, <clears throat> with a guy like, uh, I think specifically like um, O'Hearn, who um, has been a guy who, um, you know, I think the organization has decided to you know, commit to him, you know, for several years, but um, could be maybe a, Phrasing well here, but uh, I guess what do you see for him, for him as far as his potential? What you might um, hope to get out of him with this group, you know, as you guys look to shape this roster? Well, I mean, I could speak to the roster more in a, as a whole, and I think what we're going to try to do is use the entire roster. I think we're going to try to um, put guys in positions to where it's an advantageous matchup for them, uh, use off days judiciously to help guys get rest and stay fresh and plug guys in and kind of use them on more of a fluid rotation. So I, I would anticipate him getting at more at bats than he than he probably had last year and and being a, a big part of the team, whether it be off the bench or in, in advantageous matchups, you know, on, on any given night. What's the, I guess, what do you see as the value of seeing some of the guys like him, um, maybe more so even like a Taylor or Salvi guys, with that young group as far as just having those guys along with the guys who are still really finding their footing? I think it's a great plan, you know, in, in conversations with Michael A. Taylor and Dozier and the guys that have some more reps, um, they're very complimentary of the young guys and how they've gone about their business and how they, they work and how they compete. And on the other side, the, the younger players respect them for what they've done and the way they continue to be good leaders and good teammates. So I think what I've seen so far, or not seen, but heard so far over the phone is these guys have a tremendous amount of respect for each other, which is a good place to start as a good teamwork. Yeah, Matt, are, are you, do you plan to platoon a lot? I don't know if that's the best word to use. Well, I mean, I think that would entail we know exactly who's on the team and all that stuff. So it's hard to really say, yeah, we're going to platoon these spots. Mm -hmm. What I can say is we plan to use the whole roster. You know, we're, we're going to try to put guys in the best positions to succeed on any given night. And, and hopefully, hopefully we, in order to have a platoon, you have to have both sides of it covered. And I think that's something that we're going to actively try to do is put a versatile roster together. Yeah, I, at the GM meetings, I talked to JJ, and he didn't use the word platoon, <clears throat> but it almost sounded like he thought you were going to really utilize the roster, as you said. The reason I ask the question is that there's one school of thought that with young players, which you have a, a ton of, you're better off to have them hit against different types of pitchers just to get better at, that you're going to stunt growth and development if you only look for the right matchups. So how, how will you, will you approach sure, that? Sure. I mean, I mean, the more at-bats, the better generally. But at the same time, I mean, if you're – you know, I'll take an extreme example, but if you have a, a rookie left-handed hitter that comes up and you're facing Chris Sale, you just want to bank those three at-bats to say you got them and you got carved up, or would you rather have somebody in there that has a fighting chance and then pick a softer landing for that lefty, whoever it is, till he gets a little more confidence and maybe the ability to get in there and, and feel like he's got a fighting chance against somebody like that. So. Is there a right answer? I, I, I don't know 100%, but I would say that I would take my chances with a major league right-handed hitter against Chris Sale rather than a lefty that has not seen something like that before. Right, well, he's an extreme example. Obviously. Right, but you could pick, you know, I, that's the first name that came to mind, but, mm -hmm. you know, tough left-handers are not, they're tough left-handers for a reason, right? I mean, and, and if you have someone that is on a team as a right-handed hitter, and you don't play them in that situation, then why are they on the team? You know, you got to guys have to have roles, right? And get, whether that's a defensive replacement or a pinch runner or a, a platoon, a short side platoon, whatever you want to call it, if you don't use them in the spots where they can help the team, then that's a wasted roster spot. Matt, I think you said uh, yesterday you guys were just starting to talk about 
Bobby Wood Jr. and where he might best play next year. Um, what, what are going into those conversations about just whether he can shortstop stop for third base? Or what are the kind of the factors are you kind of thinking about there? Well, I think the, the big thing is what's best for him as a young player and his development. And I think, I think everyone understands that he's a premier athlete that can possibly play a premier position. So I think we're going to give him every chance we can to hopefully play short and, and really improve um, because I think that's where he wants to be and that's that's a big part of it is his desire to be really good at it. Yeah. I guess the metrics you said he wasn't great at short stuff last year. I know you didn't really see it obviously up close, but um, are there you know things beyond the, the numbers that maybe, I mean, he does have the athleticism to play there that suggests like he can grow into that spot? Yeah, I mean, you just said it. I mean, he's super athletic he's been a shortstop that's where he wants to be and I think when you have that recipe you want to give that every chance to play out with, uh, with MJ um, similar but also very different in terms of he's an athletic guy where Bobby doesn't have you know necessarily somebody blocking him at that spot MJ is catching his hobby in left field is that something that you really have asked or you have hope for him to just hope to be able to focus on that as opposed to so that's another thing we still have to discuss. You know, I mean, I, I don't think we're at a spot right now where we can say, hey, you're going to get this many games here and this many games here. I think there's too many moving parts still and things that we have to talk about before we do it. Are there any drawbacks in your mind as far as, especially as a first year manager, having WBC and guys who may be in and out? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some, yeah, the continuity just won't be there the whole time, but. Um, I think that's a once, probably a once in a lifetime opportunity for those guys that you wouldn't want to take away from them. So we'll, we'll get through that. Q, what do you think um, spring will be like in terms of uh, players adapting to and learning the, the new rules and adjusting to that? The new rules? The new rules, the, the, oh, okay. the pitch yeah, clock yeah. and the, yeah, good the defensive shift. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to talk as much as we can about helping them adapt to that, whether it be, you know, shot clocks in the bullpen or during their live BPs, you know, things to, to simulate it as they get ramped up. Um, I don't know what to expect from the bases. I've seen them. I don't know, you know, whether that's going to be a big factor for them actually just running the bases. It's something we'll have to we'll have to adapt, you know, just see how that goes. But I think the pickoff thing is going to be something that I know I need to get comfortable with and how we decide to value those picks and how we can take advantage of it maybe on our side and you know whether we're running the bases or, or using the pickoffs I, I, that's a good thing that I think we're all gonna have to adjust to have you guys had meetings here at the managers at, with, with regard to the rules that's that, tomorrow that's tomorrow okay yeah. thank you guys yep.